Hello, I'm Dean Martin with Transmission Digest. Welcome to the Transtar Industry Studios here at Babcock's Media. Hello and welcome to another installment of Transmission Tech Minute. Today we're going to be discussing various aspects of the ZF and Chrysler 8-speed rear-wheel drive automatic transmission. You may notice that we're not in the studio today, but rather at Trans Colonial Auto Service in Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Rick Basta, the owner of Transcolonial, graciously offered us his facility to do this procedure. So let's go in and get started. With me here today is Anthony, head rebuilder and longtime technician at Transcolonial. Uh, Anthony is going to be the designator wrench. And uh, quite frankly, I don't want to get my shirt dirty. So if anything goes south, we can blame Anthony, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's good. Uh, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about ZF, uh, eight speed automatic transmission. ZF has always been on the cutting edge of transmission development, and this eight-speed is no different. For people that have done the six HP family, this is completely different as far as the gear train goes. They've put a lot of uh, development into this, a lot of thought. Uh, so far, they work fairly well, like any other transmission, have had some uh, issues. Uh, before I forget it, I want to thank uh, Kenny, at Monroeville Transmission in Monroeville, Ohio uh, for the use of his uh, Chrysler A45RE, uh, Transtech, uh, Milan, Ohio for use of their 8HP45, and of course Transtar for this good old 8HP70. Uh, I'm just going to give a little overview on the outside. This is a one-piece case. Internally, the components are of a modular design. And when you look on this side, uh, you basically just have your uh, oil check and fill plug. You have your uh, electrical connector, similar to what the 6HP was. These cases are made to accommodate two wheel or four wheel. So you can have a two wheel drive with just a flange on the output or you bolt on the uh, four-wheel drive adapter, the case is already modified for that. And of course, there's uh, output shaft seals. When you look on this side, you can see that there is a casting, and that's where the model designation is. When Zia first launched this in 2009, the Generation 1 had several models from 8HP 30 all the way up to 8HP 90. The 8HP number denotes an 8-speed, H for hydraulic converter, P for planetary gear set, and then 45 or 90 is short stick for 450 or 900 newton meters of torque capacity. Uh, most of these transmissions are drive-by-wire. So the lever on the side is not a manual shift lever, it's merely for park release. You also have your cooler in and out port, and certain models will have a thermal element uh, to create a fast warm-up. This transmission is fairly efficient, they want to get it warmed up quickly. So you may see models that has that uh, thermal unit that other transmissions have had. It only has one test plug here for converter pressure, so there's not a lot of external testing that can be done. Uh, this particular 8HP70 uh, came from Chrysler because Chrysler actually buys these. They don't produce them like the 845RE. It actually has a Chrysler number, so it doesn't mean it's a Chrysler transmission. It's a ZF transmission. Uh, we're going to gut this thing fairly quickly, and through the miracle of video editing, uh, we shouldn't have any problem. Okay, we're going to put a clamp on this, and um, 
put it on the holding fixture. We have the transmission on a uh, holding fixture, which makes it easier because these are quite heavy. Anthony is going to take off the extension housing first uh, because there is a small snap ring on the output shaft uh, before we can pull the modular unit out. And of course, you can't use impact guns because the bolts are uh, not accessible with a socket. You got to wrench them out. And uh, as I mentioned, there are different there are different types of four-wheel adapters. Go ahead and pull the seal. And this this is the four-wheel adapter for the 8HP70, and this is actually a four-wheel adapter for a Chrysler. Uh, or for a Jeep, actually, four-wheel drive, A45RE. So there's no rhyme and reason to the capacity on certain components. And Anthony just took off a snap ring, and there's a, a thin washer also that goes on there. And on the front, of course, we have to pull the lockup uh, O-ring out the input shaft. And Anthony's going to pull the, uh, all the pump bolts which are everything in this transmission are Torx drive bolts. <coughs> Some are Torx to yield. And uh, yeah, and as Anthony mentioned, the pump bolts are aluminum and they have the uh, seal washers on them. And ZF and Chrysler both recommend replacing these because these are like Torx to yield bolts. There's 13 of them. And a Transtech does have a package of 13, so it is recommended to replace these and not reuse them like any other torque to yield bolt. Now we're going to flip this over because you can't pull the pump unless you pull the valve body out. And of course, you can't pull the valve body without pulling the electrical connector. We good there? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the pan on the 8-speed uh, models are similar to the 6-HP. These are plastic pans with integral filters. So you want to do a filter change, you're replacing the pan. Uh, believe it or not, uh, ZF really spent a lot of time to address commonality of parts. So when it comes to the Chrysler 845RE and the ZF, 8HP45, uh, most components will change. Even the, this is the filter area, the intake uh, or the outlet, and uh, this is integral in the pan. So when you buy it, it's one assembly. And it has a rubber gasket on it, and that happens to be the same between levels of 8HP45 and 8HP70. <clears throat> the valve body on this, which Anthony's going to pull, um, the valve body on this is a mechatronic unit, and, and again, anybody that's dealt with ZF on six speeds, uh, they know what it is. That's, uh, that's the electrical connector sleeve, and you have to pull up the release on the valve body to be able to get that sleeve out. And there are several bolts that hold this down. You want to take out only the bolts that hold it down, not the bolts that assemble the valve body together. Uh, but they're easily identifiable because the bolts that hold the valve body are bigger heads. One other thing I want to mention, uh, there is an output speed sensor, which also has to be unbolted. And one other thing before Anthony pulls this, uh, certain models that have start-stop will have a uh, kind of a cylinder back here which is called HIS. That's Hydraulic Impulse Storage. And that is ZF's design to address start-stop conditions. Normally on other vehicles, when you have start-stop, the engine dies, an electric uh, mo uh, motor kicks on to keep the transmission charged. On the ZF model, it doesn't have that. It's a, basically an accumulator that's charged when the engine dies the accumulator keeps the transmission charged for instant application when it restarts. 
So if it has the HIS system, that's a big cylinder back here. You can be able to identify it easily. The cases are fairly common between both models. So you can go ahead and pull the... Let's mention that this has to be, the part needs to be released. Yeah. The valve body. Right. And some of these units have a threaded boss that will actually... Hold the lever, hold out, of the lever the way. out of the way. <clears throat> this park assembly, and this is only park, is uh, got a spring-loaded lever, and it uh, can be fairly tough to get off unless you have um, something to hold it out of the way. What I'm going to do, since there is not a lever on here, I'm just going to put a pair of pliers to be able to move this so that Anthony can get this off. The spring is fairly stout, so uh, you want to use something to take the load off of that. This plunger is merely for park release and that is connected to the lever. This is the output speed sensor. You've got to be real careful with this, which we'll get into later. Normal solenoids, but there are some unique features of this. Okay. Next we're going to pull the pump. Now the the pump on this happens to be a remote access pump as many new applications use and it's um, uh, it's an efficient design. You can get more pressure without having to sacrifice engine performance. Okay. And you may as well go ahead and pull the uh, ring gear and the B clutch. Uh, we'll be going over the components uh, individually, part two, but this is the pump assembly with the A clutch, uh, A clutch pack. And what Anthony's pulling out now is the P1 ring gear, which happens to be the B clutch hub and also the B-clutch friction pack. And with that out of the way and the snap ring off the back of the output shaft, this assembly is ready to come out. Again, it's fairly, uh, fairly heavy. Uh, Chrysler actually recommends standing it up and down and, and having a, uh, a holding fixture that you can pull it up out of there. Anthony's pretty strong, so we should be able to get it out with no problem. Okay. <clears throat> and you can see that this whole assembly is a modular unit. You can just stand it up in the hole. And the entire gear train is in here. So this transmission has, as I said, five different clutch packs, and they label them A, B, C, D, and E. There are four different planetaries, and they just number one, two, three, and four. So going from front to back, you have your planetaries. Uh, the clutches are not exactly A, B, C. It actually goes A, B, E, C, D. But uh, again, it's a fairly compact uh, setup. Mentioned that three are applied and two are not at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, what Anthony was saying is, for efficiency purposes, when you apply three different clutch packs, there are only two open. That reduces engine drag, which improves fuel economy. So again, from an engineering standpoint, uh, ZF did a real good job on this uh, in most respects. So we're going to be uh, going through these components to give you a bird's eye view uh, what it takes to go through this transmission. So we'll see you in part two. I'm Mike Riley. Stay tuned.